Hello everyone, welcome to this first, uh, well, this is the third um, session of this self-knowledge course. Um, today we are going to be talking about a very interesting topic. We are going to be talking about astral projection. If you are just watching this self-knowledge course for the first time, um, I invite you to look to the um, two lessons that we've already um, seen and that are recorded here on the page. Um, in the first one, we were talking about what is self-knowledge and what are the objectives of getting to know ourselves. And in the second one, that was last Sunday, we were talking about death. We were talking about um, what is death, what happens when our physical body dies, the different uh, types of death that exist and so on. That, that was uh, very interesting, so I invite you to look here in the page for that for those um, lessons. Also, I invite you to um, follow the page and connect every Sunday to this uh, at this same time to this live broadcast to follow this completely free self-knowledge course. Um, as I was saying, today we are going to be talking about astral projection. Um, and it is a very interesting and a very important topic because with this practice you can investigate many things. You can uh, corroborate all the information that you are receiving in this course and it is very it, it is a very useful tool um, for or that will help us in this path to achieve self knowledge um, if you haven't yet experienced a conscious astral projection or if you have already experienced it these explanations will be equally useful since we are not only going to learn what is astral projection and the different techniques to achieve this and the steps uh, or the step by step to achieve a conscious astral projection but we are also going to be talking about what is this practice useful for why do we need to start um, astral projecting um, also, we are going to clarify certain concepts that exist in relation to this practice. So we are going to be talking about um, those concepts and we are going to see if really there are risk on doing this practice. So let's start with today's lecture. Mm, and let's start by um, explaining why is it called astral projection well it is called a, it is called projection first because it consists on, of taking out an internal double or soul a body exactly like the physical one but of a molecular nature so this body looks the same as the physical one but being of a different nature it has different properties for example that body can stretch and stretch and then return to its original state so if we are in a dream and actually when we are dreaming we feel it just like when we are awake and we look ourselves and everything around just the same as always but as the astral body is from a different nature because it is uh, molecular if we for example stretch a finger to check if we are in the physical or in the astral plane if we are in the astral dimension the finger is going to stretch um, also with this body as it is of a lighter nature we can fly we can pass through walls um, so if we are in the astral and we jump we can remain floating in the air or we can fly or if we try to penetrate a wall or any object for example with our hand um, we will be able to do so and 
um, this way, by doing that, we can verify that we are in the astral plane. So it is called projection or unfolding because it is about taking out an interior double that although it looks the same as the physical body, it is of a different nature. And the reason why it is called astro is because with it we can travel to all celestial bodies or astros in the galaxy later on in the universe. So if we have always wondered if there's life on other planets, in actually in a conscious astral unfolding or a conscious astral projection, we can investigate it directly by asking our being to take us to the planet that we want to investigate and if we have the merits, we will do that investigation. But what is important that we begin to understand um, that astral projection is not anything paranormal. It's not anything strange or, or, or fanciful. It is actually a natural process that happens every time we fall asleep. As we saw in uh, previous talks, we are not only this physical body, but we are also composed of a soul and a a spirit. So what happens every time this physical body falls asleep is that our soul or our mind, which is made up of molecules, lifts our physical body towards that uh, molecular dimension, towards that astral world or world of dreams to have experiences there. So every time we fall asleep, we go there. And what we usually do is, or what we commonly do, is that we project all the desires and all the mechanical um, actions of our mind. So, um, but also there, we receive many messages from that conscious part that make us up. That's our spirit. And these messages that we receive um, almost always come in a symbolic form. And all these experiences that our soul has when our physical body um, sleeps is what we remember as dreams when we wake up. So as we always, or as we have our consciousness asleep, we don't realize that we are out of our body. We don't realize that we find ourselves dreaming, no matter how absurd the dream is. That is, we can see elephant flying, and that doesn't call us to realize that we are in a dream. That is because we are unconscious during the day. During the day, we are also asleep so and unconscious. So when we go to sleep, even, even though we get out of our body, even though our soul goes to that molecular dimension, we do not realize that we already have left our body. Um, so, at this point, it is good to clarify something that I think is very important. And it is, what is the difference between lucid dreams and astral projections or astral travels? Actually, when we are talking about dreams, about lucid dreams and astral projections, we are talking about the same thing. Since in each of them, we are talking about the experiences that our soul clothed with the astral body um, experience when it unfolds toward that or towards that fifth dimension of nature. The only difference is in the level of consciousness that we have during the experience. We used to say that we astral project when, by applying one of the many techniques, we manage to unfold, like this guy we're seeing here, or to project out of our body and we stand from our bed, we look at our physical body laying down in bed, and we move at will in the astral plane. That's what we used to call astral projection. But actually, when we are dreaming and we manage to ask ourselves if we are dreaming or not, and we check 
to verify, for example, stretching the finger or, for example, um, jumping to see if we fly, or if we just realize by intuition that we are in a dream, we are in the same exact plane that when we um, consciously unfold. And if we are conscious enough, we can move at will out of that dream and we can go and we can investigate the same things and visit the same uh, exact places. So when you have the opportunity to move in the astral plane from both uh, positions, from um, consciously unfolding yourself uh, and from awakening in a dream and say, am I dreaming or, I'm, or am I on a physical uh, plane? And you go and you investigate something or you go to certain place, you get to check by yourself that is actually the same thing. The only difference is the consciousness you have. You could say, mm, but is that when I unfold, I am aware of being outside of outside of my body. But or while when dreaming, I am not. And what happens is the following. As I was saying, we live with our consciousness asleep. We live completely fascinated with this three-dimensional world. We go through life totally mechanized, deconcentrated, and without any control of our mind and our emotions. We are not aware of ourselves in our daily basis. In this very moment that you are listening to me, um, I could ask you, are you being aware of yourself? Are you living in the present moment? Are you aware that you uh, are currently in the third dimension? How do you know that you are not now in a dream? If when you dream, you are totally convinced that you are awake. Well, that unconscious we go to sleep every night and we unfold and we mechanically begin to project our multiple desires our thoughts our emotions that in that plane take shape and create an environment in which we move in our dream actually we project all that egoic multiplicity that composes our soul but if we manage to become aware of being in a dream, we can, as I was saying, get out of the dream and move at will in the astral plane just by wishing to, uh, just by invoking your being, your inner master, to guide you, to show you uh, this or that thing or to take you there or somewhere or just going by yourself. Uh, many times it happens that we become conscious of being in the astral plane and immediately we feel that we are returning to the body that we woke up but when we do and that is important that we take into account that if we just uh, realize that we are in a dream and we feel or if we astrally unfold by doing the the, the practice and we feel that we go to the body to the physical body we feel like if we woke up we need to check, we need to uh, stretch a finger, or we need to get up and, and jump. Because most of the time, when we return to the body, we keep or we continue being unfolded. But we think that we woke up. And what happened there is that we let, or, or we um, went out of the dream and we went to our physical body. So if we check and we find out that we are still unfolded, we can go and we can move at will in that plane. Other times, we are aware of finding ourselves in a dream, in a dream, sorry, but we don't have enough consciousness to move at will outside of the dream sense. That sometimes happens. Other times, we have very clear, very vivid dreams that seem very real, but we don't realize that we are dreaming, even if we are uh, flying or if, we're, or if we are doing fantastic things. And all this, as we see, 
depends on the level of consciousness we have at the time of the experience. Um, it also happens that we can consciously unfold, we can, for example, leave our house and then we lose the consciousness that we were in the astral, in an astral projection because we get identified with something we saw and we stayed dreaming because there because of that because i was seeing i don't know a horse of or i was seeing i don't know the neighbor i just like get identified and i lose that consciousness and that also happens so here we can be clear that all these experiences are processed in the same plane. The only difference will be in how conscious we are so we can move at will in the astral plane. So what we seek to teach in this talk is how to do this consciously, how to make ourselves aware of the moment when our astral body detaches itself from the physical body when it falls asleep and also to teach what this practice is useful for. So let's um, talk a little about what is astral projection useful for? What can we investigate when we are unfolded? Because we can unfold and if we don't know what we can do, during an astral projection, actually we are losing the opportunity to investigate many uh, interesting and many important things. Um, I think that the first thing we check when we achieve conscious astral projection is to realize that we are not only this physical body. That is the first um, thing that we get to check and that is actually a very very important thing uh, when we see when we get to see ourselves outside of our physical body moving at will with another body and also we get to see our physical body laying down in bed that is uh, that is fantastic and the second thing that we realize just by achieving this practice for the first time is that there are more dimensions besides this third dimension. And after those uh, first verifications, a new world of experiences, investigations and checks that we can make in this higher dimension of nature just opens. The information that we can obtain in the astral is only minded and it is in itself a very important tool for self-knowledge actually we can investigate anything we want here i made um, a small list of things we could investigate just as a reference so that we can broaden our perspective of the latent possibilities this practice has. Um, in the astral, we can connect with our own immortal and eternal being. So by connecting with that superior part of our consciousness that we can call our master, that we can call our inner guru, that's our spirit, that is we can see in the astral plane as our um, div divine father and divine mother because they can take the shape of our parents or of somebody we feel um, respect for. And actually by connecting with those superior parts of our consciousness, we could solve, for example, those ex existential questions that we have and we don't know how to get to answer them. For example, what is the purpose of my existence? It's not the same that you read in a book, for example, that lives have a purpose, has a purpose, uh, or that you hear someone who, say, who claims to be a guru that tells you life has a purpose and the purpose is that one. And the, you know, the purpose for you being here is, I don't know, this or that, or you go to a church, um, and the religious leader t tell you that in the Bible says, or in the, this book says that the purpose of our lives is this or that. It's not the same than 
going inside yourself, connecting with your own inner being, with your own particular God, let's say, and ask him, what is the purpose of my existence? And get to answer that question. And that is something that you can achieve in a conscious astral projection. Another thing we can get to investigate in an astral projection is what happens when you die. Last Sunday, we were talking about that topic. And as I, was, as I told you last Sunday, you can corroborate all that information in a conscious astral projection. You can unfold and you can ask your own being to show you what happens the last time you die, for example. What happens during that uh, judgment process that you just live? You can investigate your past lives actually you can unfold and you can ask your being to show you who you were in your past life to show you um any of your past existences and you can actually get to um see or experience that in, in in first person or you can see it just and you are going to remember it and that is very interesting to investigate and actually most people don't know that they can really investigate those things in an astral projection but it is completely possible um also and that is very important you can investigate in which of your 108 existences in this cycle you currently are. As I was explaining um, last Sunday, for each cycle of manifestation in this third dimension, we have 108 opportunities to awaken our consciousness. So it is very interesting to investigate in a conscious astral projection in which of those 108 uh, existences you currently are what it's common um, or what or the regular way you're being to um, show you that information is by showing you a hundred and eight candles and the uh, amount of candles that are lit are the existences that you just um, lived and the ones that remains unlit are the existences that still remain and also in an astral projection you can go to the limbo and you can visit a relative or a friend who has passed away and haven't uh, reborn yet um, also you can go in a conscious astral projection to the court of the objective justice to see the book of your karmic debts so there you can investigate how you can pay for your karmas to transcend an illness or a recurrence in later talks we will be talking about karmas and about karma negotiation so if we keep um in the course you're going to learn more about that Another thing that is very interesting to investigate in a conscious astral projection is the way of creation from which you came. When we emanate from the absolute sun or that source or God, whatever you want to call it, you or we emanated from one of seven rays. And each ray has a vocation. There is a ray of medicine, there is a ray of arts, there is a ray of justice, and so they are they are seven rays, and we are going to be talking that in later talks also. And we can get to investigate that when you ask your being to show you in which uh, or from which um, ray you came, um, he he can give you the exact number the first I don't know the second or what is usually is that sh he show you a um, mirror and there you get to see your forehead and the amount of lines that you see in your forehead says or tells you the uh, ray from which you came from that will tell you uh, your, the vocation of your being um, also we can get to um, investigate the existence of different dimensions for example we can get from the astral plane to the mental dimension in a practice known as the mental uh, projection and you can go to the causal dimension that is something that you also can investigate um also you can know the upper parts of your consciousness 
I just told you that. Um, your inner father, your divine mother. Um, so there you are going to meet your inner master, your inner guru, yeah, that spiritual director that we all have inside. But also you can meet the lower parts of your being, that's your ego, all your different ways of being, you, of being, you are going to um, meet them in the astral plane, because in the astral plane, all your different ways of being takes the shape of a person or of an animal. For example, your own anger, you can um, see it in the astral as a bull or as a, a gorilla, or your lust, you can watch there like, uh, or you can meet your own lust with um, like a pig or like a snake, for example. Um, another thing, that's why I told you that it's very good when you are trying to achieve what is self-knowledge because to know your, get to know yourself means to get to know your own ego and your own consciousness. Um, also, in an astral projection, you can go to the Akashic Records of Nature. So actually, you can see what already has happened. So you can see the past and you can also see the future. Um, you can verify the process of the psychological death with your own divine mother. In our last um, conference, we, are, we were teaching the practice of the psychological death, which is very important. And you can verify with your divine mother how the, the, the process with uh, the work that you are doing with a uh, way of being, is how, it is, how is it going? Um, you can verify also the purification process of your energy that you are going to be learning about that in this course when you see um, water in a dream or in an astral projection you are actually um, seeing your own energy so if you see the water um, that's dirty that means that your energy is actually contaminated and when you get to purify your energy using the psychological death, you get to see the changes in the water in the astral plane. Um, also, you can interview, and this is, this is very interesting, with self-realized masters, such as a Buddha, such as a Jesus, or Krishna, or Samael, or Judas, or Saint Germain, Rabalu, etc. You can meet um, self-realized masters but also you can get in a conscious astral projection to investigate if someone who claims to be a master who claims to be a guru really is so that is very that is a very important use of the astral projection you can also investigate self-knowledge you can investigate if this topics that we are um, teaching in this course actually are going to help you to get to know yourself. Um, you can visit temples of, uh, Temple of Wisdom, you can investigate if there is life on other planets, as I, as I told you, and you can also visit places in these uh, very planets, like for example, you can go to Greece or you can go to visit, I don't know, the pyramids of Egypt. Actually, you can do it in an astral um, unfold them. So, as I told you, you see that um, there's there are plenty of things that you can do in an astral projection. Um, these are only some examples of things we can investigate in a conscious astral projection. And it is important to understand that absolutely all of us have the possibility of astrally unfolding just by practicing with patience and perseverance. But having the ability to remain conscious during the protection for a long time and having access to do certain of these investigations is going to require certain merits of you. Um, it will require, for example, that you are making an effort to wake up, to live in the present moment to start living in a state of mindfulness and not losing it, um, just letting your mind or your emotion takes you all the time from, to the past, to the future, to worry, to fantasize, etc. So to make the effort to be here and now. 
living in a self-observation state. Um, also, it, some of these investigations will require us to begin to make a wise use of our energy. So not to waste it and to begin to purify it because our energy is like our fuel. So we need to start making a wise use, use sorry, of our energy. And many internal investigations have a cost. And we have to know that the currency with which the, with which the universe moves is love. So when we strive to love others, that is to help others to awaken, we actually generate the merits so that internally um, they awaken us and give us access to much of the vast inner wisdom. Um, now, before starting to explain how the practice of astral projection is done, let's talk a little about some misconceptions that, is, that exist in relation to this practice. Um, the first one that I want to talk about is this misconception that this practice is dangerous. And it is important to know that our soul and our physical body are connected by the silver cord, which is an unbreakable and forever expendable cord that joins both the physical and the astral vice, and that it can only be broken by the death ray at the moment of death of the physical body. So as we saw in, in, in last conference, we all have that um, silver cord. And for that reason, um, the rumors and the myths about certain dangers during natural projection are invalid and are unfounded, such as that we can stay in the astral and not return, or that when we return, someone else could be inside our body. That is totally impossible due to that silver cord. And also, this cord constantly sends information from the physical to the astral. That is why we return or we wake up just by hearing a sound or just by being called or being moved. Exactly the same will happen if we, if we are consciously uh, unfolded. And we need to like, like, like think, if nothing like this has ever happened to us every night, we were dreaming unconscious, nothing will happen to us when doing it consciously. These false rumors are spread by people who haven't done this and by people who don't want us to wake up. Because if we get to investigate them, we will see that they are fakers or we can get to discover their true hidden intentions, such as uh, religious leaders or such, uh, or, or, or like fake rules. Um, the second concept is that it is difficult to achieve. And the truth is that this practice is possible for everyone. And it turns out that precisely believing the concept that it is difficult makes it difficult for us to achieve it, since what we believe we create. Therefore, if we focus on that is difficult or complicated or dangerous, these concepts will make it difficult for us to achieve it. If we do the practice, believing in advance that we will not achieve it, we certainly will not do it. And if we do the practice with fear, fear will block our, as our access since the astral is totally related to our emotions. Um, the third concept is that it is only for advanced people. And that's not true either. We can all achieve the conscious astral projection. What is true is that the more you advance in your self-knowledge process, more in-depth investigations you will be able to make. We all have an inner being that will guide us from the, the, the very beginning. Um, the remaining concepts are that people should not practice this or that this is a negative 
practice. And although it is true that there are malicious people who use this practice for perverse purposes like stealing other uh, people energy the practice will be positive or negative depending on the sense or the purpose with which we do it here in this course we are teaching this practice to advance on our self-knowledge process and for the development of our own consciousness. In addition, we always rec recommend to do this practice asking for the guide of our inner being that represents wisdom and love. And we also teach the conjuration so we learn to protect ourselves during our conscious astral projection. So now that we understand what is the astral projection, what is it for and that is completely safe and useful let's see how um, is the practice to achieve conscious astral projection um, there are many ways to do it many techniques we could apply so I will list a few that I already have tried and I have tested that take work um, the first one is by concentration if you Sorry. And the practice or this technique consists on concentrating on something, for example, on the rhythm of our breathing when we inhale, when we exhale naturally, or we can concentrate on the beating of a heart. And we are going to keep all the concentration focused on this while our physical body falls asleep and we begin to feel the symptoms that those symptoms says that we are already unfolding i'll explain what the symptoms are and what to do when we feel them in a moment um, the second technique is with imagination um, if we are good at imagining, this technique is actually perfect and it consists on imagining a place as vividly and in detail as possible. For example, you could imagine your own living room or you could imagine, uh, for example, a beach. And you, go, you are going to imagine everything in detail. If you're imagining a beach, you are going to imagine the sand, uh, the feeling of the sand on your feet, the sea, uh, the wind, the feeling of the wind on your face, uh, the sun, the heat of the sun, and you're going to do this in great detail and suddenly you will find yourself projected in that place but being conscious within a dream. That is um, another technique. The third one is the sleep visual. This technique is excellent for those who fall asleep very easily. It consists of monitoring the arrival of symptoms that indicate that the physical body has fallen asleep. And if we snore, for example, we can even hear the physical body snoring while we are conscious there. We stay concentrated watching the body and we are going to begin to feel various symptoms and we are going to be able to realize that the physical body just fell asleep and we are going to get out of our bed with the astral body and we are going to verify that we are unfolded for example giving a jump with the intention of floating and if you are in the astral we will remain floating in the environment that is such a an amazing sensation and or or you could stretch a finger and if it stretches then you will verify that you are in the astral plane we could even look at the bed and see your physical body laying asleep um, the fourth technique is by practicing the ongoing death or the psychological death and this technique is very good because it consists on eliminating all things, be it thoughts, or feelings, emotions, be it sensations, since many times we begin to feel itching everywhere and that 
the concentrate us from the practice. We are going to eliminate worries or fears or the anxiety. Well, all those things that begin to appear in our mind and in our body and that don't allow us to concentrate enough to achieve the projection. So when we are laying down, focused on achieving the unfolding, to everything that comes, any thought, any emotion, any uh, sensation, we are going to ask our Divine Mother to eliminate it. And we immediately return to the concentration until we begin to feel the symptoms. And the last technique is by chanting mantras and this is probably the most effective of all it consists of emitting sounds that will generate a certain vibration in our body that will accelerate the detachment process i'm going to explain now this step by step to uh, the practice and when we reach the point to applying the technique I'll make the example explaining the different mantras that we can use to achieve the conscious astral projection. Well, the first step, let's say, uh, to achieve a conscious astral projection is to find a comfortable position. So you're going to choose the position according to the ease or difficulty that you have to fall asleep. And it is uh, preferable to use the supine position since in that position it's easier to feel the symptoms. Um, once you are in your comfortable position you are going to make a protection conjuration and I will be teaching the protection conjurations in uh, lecture number seven so actually now because of the time, I'm not going to explain all the process of the conjuration, but um, if you keep attending this course, you're going to learn all these uh, protection conjurations. Uh, and what we need to do is the conjuration of the Belilin and the magic circle. Um, so the Belilin consists on singing a simple song that will clean the environment of any negative energy that could deconcentrate us from the practice. Then you're going to make a light circle that will close the place so those negative energies cannot return. Actually, these conjurations also help us to avoid the sleep paralysis. Um, the next step is to ask our being to assist us during the practice and to help us to be successful in it. So um, you're going to ask your inner father, your inner mother to help you to uh, achieve the practice. And the next step is setting an objective. And this is very, very important because as we saw in the astral, we can do and we can invest and we can investigate too many things and if we don't go with a clear and, and defined purpose in advance then when we become conscious in the astral we will wonder and we will lose the opportunity to investigate something important so what we are going to do is that we're going to identify with anything and we are going to start dreaming so you set your objective um, in your heart and you repeat it three times for example if your objective is that you want to visit a death relative or that you want to, I don't know visit the pyramids of Egypt you're going to repeat it three times so you set that objective um, and the next step when, once you have your objective clear is that you're going to make a process of relaxation and this process is also very important because I could say I could say it guarantees that almost 70% of the success of the practice because this process will put us in an optimal state so we can easily feel uh, the symptoms of the unfolding and how are we going to relax ourselves well the first that we are going to relax is our mind and 
we are going to do so to concentrate on listening for their sounds for at least one minute without really thinking of them or without being identified with them. So we are going to listen to the sounds that surround us. We are going to listen them and we are going to let them go. And we are going to see how our mind is going to start being quiet. Um, next, we are going to relax our emotion. And to relax our emotion, all we have to do is breathe deeply and softly from one to three minutes. We are going to inhale deeply, retain, and you are going to ex exhale through the mouth, like Then you inhale, retain, and In this way, doing this by one to three minutes, depending on how, um, how much you need to relax your emotion, then uh, you're going to experience how you're going to start feeling like relaxed. And next, you're going to relax your physical body. And how are we going to do it? We are going to visualize how a bright light, whatever calming color you choose, you could choose this uh, yellow that we have in the example. You are going to visualize how this light will relax all the parts of your body from the bottom up, starting from the right foot. So you start with your right, right foot, you visualize it, you feel it, but you're not going to move it. And you're going to imagine how the light enters to your foot and you're going to command your feet to relax and calm down. Um, if we don't fall asleep quickly, we can do this toe by toe. Then uh, we can go to the front of the feet, the heel, the sole of the right one, and we order uh, them to relax. Then we go up through the leg and so on with the rest of your body. So this is done with all parts of the body from the bottom up, starting from the right to the left, and visualizing how each part of the body is filled with this soothing light, and we order them to relax, to calm and to rest. Then we are going to visualize all our body completely glowing and without moving our body in a general way we are going to order it. Physical body, relax, calm and rest. Once you are there totally relaxed but your mind totally um, awakened, you are going to use the chosen technique. So there um, you can use the technique of sleep visual, you, you can use the technique of um, concentration, you can use it, uh, you can use the imagination technique uh, or the ongoing death one. And, but now I'm gonna make the example with the um, chanting mantras one, once, sorry. Um, so it is important that we take into account that we will only use one technique per night. Also, um, that if you if we are mentalizing, we are going to use only one mantra per practice, since each mantra has a specific vibration. And if we switch from mantras in the same practice, it can cause discomfort and even, in, and even insomnia. So if we are doing it with one mantra, that's a mantra that we are going to keep for the whole practice. Um, the first mantra that we can use to achieve the conscious astral projection is the mantra fa ra on So you are going to uh, pronounce it elongating every uh, syllable like and while doing it you're going to visualize a pyramid in front of your forehead and while slowly I'm mentalizing we can repeat this out loud for like 10 to, to 12 times then we go lowering the voice 
until we remain repeating the mantra in our mind, until uh, feeling the symptoms. Uh, the second mantra that you can use is the mantra La Ras, and you pronounce it like this, La Ras. And what you're going to visualize with this one is a, a purple uh, point of light here in the middle of your eyebrows. So you're going to visualize this purple point and you're going to pronounce la ras several times and you go lower in the voice and you keep um, saying the mantra in your uh, mind and you're going to soon start feeling the, the vibrations. You're going to start feeling the symptoms. Another mantra that you can use is the mantra O. Oh, and for that one, you're going to be concentrated in your heart. So it's like, oh, oh. So slowly, you're going to uh, mentalize this one. And you, you can also use the mantra om, like om, concentrated in your heart. Uh, and the last mantra that I'm going to give you is the mantra uh, R. It sounds like a, like a cat, like this mantra is concentrated in your throat and it is very good for people who tend to fall um, asleep very quickly so use this just like if you're a cat and this mantra also is going to generate a vibration on your body that will um, let you feel the symptoms quickly um, when your astral body is detaching from your physical body, you might feel um, some certain symptoms. Like, for example, you can feel that your body inflates, or you can feel that you float, or you can feel that your body swings softly, like you've been uh, rocked. Uh, you can feel also that your legs and, and your arms rises and, and rise and float um, or you can feel that or an electric electric current sensation in your body that's another symptom you could also feel uh, that you turn at a great uh, at a great speed that's another symptom or you can feel a noise next to your ears like a like a beep or you can appear consciously into a dream, just directly. These are all symptoms that the unfolding is taking place and that we are being aware of the process, of the process that is leaving our, our, our bodies, that our physical body is falling asleep and the astral body is unfolding and we are being conscious of this process um, if well, let's see what we should do when feeling the symptoms what we need to do is to control the emotion not panic or feel euphoria but relax even more and allow the symptom to increase so when we feel like the symptom is strong enough, then we move on to the following uh, step. That is, get out of bed and check. So um, if we feel like um, our, your arms are raised, sorry, or you feel like you are vibrating, or you feel like you've been rocked, then you uh, get out of bed and you check. How are you going to check? I just told you. You are going to jump. That's one way of checking. Uh, to uh, With intention to remain floating in the environment. Or you are going to um, uh, stretch your finger and check if you are in the astral plane. If you stretch your finger with the intention of it to or imagining that it stretches, if you are in the astral, you're actually going to see your finger getting long. Or you can stretch, uh, you can stretch your hair, and you're gonna check like how your hair gets long. And that way, you know that you're in the astral plane. If when checking, 
we find that we are still in the physical body because we didn't float or because our finger didn't stretch, then we return to bed and uh, continue using the technique until feeling the symptoms. So here we have like an explanation of what we need to do. We need to get out of bed slowly, just like if you're going to the bathroom. And for example, you are going to jump with intention to float or uh, to fly like this girl. And if you already uh, remain floating in the environment, then you know, then you know that you are astral projecting. So um, if you check and you find yourself in the astral plane, uh, consciously unfolded, then you are going to remember your objective and you are going to go for it. And this is the practice. I hope it was help you, helpful for you. If you have any question or if you have any comments, you can write them in the, um, in the chat and we are going to solve all your questions in, uh, in the chat. Here I can see that Aneuri is asking, what's the more effective technique according to your experience? And according to my experience, the more effective one is the Chanting Mantras one and the Ongoing Death one. That's, those are the most uh, effective for me. But you can try all the different techniques until you find the one that is better for you. And also um, is asking how much time can take to achieve this. Actually, it it there is not a, a time and a specific time. Actually, uh, it can you can achieve it just the first time you do it. You can achieve it by a week of trying it. You can achieve it by two weeks of trying it. It will depend on um, uh, in 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 the patience and the perseverance you have and also in how much you desire to do it because at the astro, as the astral plane is related to the emotions as much as you desire to do this as much as you want to investigate something as much as that objective you have is so strong you are going to be successful sooner so the secret is to practice with a lot of, a lot of patience until succeed and you must remember that where there's a will, there is a way. Um, in the practice, make the masters. Um, I'm going to invite you now to our next lecture that will be next Sunday to the same time. And in this conference, you're going to be talking about the seven centers of the human machine. So we are going to be learning how to align um, this seven energy centers of our body that that will be very interesting and very important topic and how to correctly manage the most valuable resource that we have that is our energy so uh, let me check on something here to see if you have any uh, questions or comments and um, actually at any time if you are watching this video um, later when the live broadcast already finished, anyway, you can do any question in the chat and we are going to be solving them there in the chat. So that's all for today. Thank you for attending this session. Um, have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye.